Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. In this video, I'll show you best DS4 Windows settings for Warzone. All right, so open up your DS4 Windows and in here, in the settings, make sure that everything is set the way it's supposed to be. Uh, so hide DS4 controller, run at startup so that it opens up well when you start your system. Start minimized so that, it, so that it stays in the tray and doesn't bother you. Close minimizes. Also make sure in the device options to set the support for the controllers that you use. So as you can see, I have used three controllers, which is the DualShock 4, DualSense, and DualShock 3. So if you have, for example, only DualShock, you set the support for only this controller. And now exit out, and we are going to be straight into our profiles. So choose your profile, press edit. Make sure that all of your buttons are assigned. So X to X, circle to circle, etc. Don't forget the analog sticks. Don't forget to set the clicks as well on both of these sticks. Also, if you want, you can also swap triggers with bumpers if that's something you want to do. For example, if you don't want to, like me, use the triggers in the shooter games and you want to make it a fast click with R1 and L1, basically what you want to do, you go to R1, you go to R2, and in the R2, basically set it instead of the trigger to the right bumper. And the same thing you go and do in the left trigger where you set the LB, also is a L1 button on the PlayStation controller. And of course, if you want guys, you can also swap any buttons to any other buttons that you want. You can swap the entire sticks, for example, if you're a lefty, for example, if you want to operate your camera and your reticle in the shooter games with the left stick, for example, if you're a lefty, you can do that as well. Just go to the left stick and just swap it to the right stick and vice versa. All right, now moving on into our dead zone settings. So in here, everything is going to be very, very specific to your own controller. So basically the dead zone is going to be set by default to, uh, I believe seven or eight or something like that. I don't really remember. And then the anti-dead zone is going to be set to precisely 20. Let me turn on my controller once again. So basically in here, make sure to set this to 20. This is default. I've set it to a different number because my controller is different in terms of this uh, stick drift. And basically the method here to figure out your lowest dead zone, which is the best for responsiveness and accuracy in your war zone and Call of Duty is going to be setting the dead zone to as low as possible so that whenever you move your stick just a little so that your reticle is already moving so that's very good for the accuracy especially in the uh distant shots right so if you're for example playing with a sniper rifle you are sitting half across the map you're looking into your scope you see the enemy if your uh, dead zone is too high if you because your enemy is far away you need to move your stick just a little and if your dead zone is high you move you, you move the stick and nothing happens so that's just a deal breaker so you need to make sure to set your dead zone to as low as possible and this will vary depending on the controller i have a dual sense and a dual shock 4 and my dual shock 4 has very little drift i was lucky to get a controller like that finally after so many years of getting this dumbass stick drift and uh yeah so basically make sure to set this to 20 precisely and then fiddle around with this dead zone the first field and figure out which is going to be the lowest dead zone when you start feeling drift increase it if there's no drift decrease it and see how far you can push it and of course you have the controller readings where you can actually see this graph as you can see of the sticks you see i'm moving them so as you can see my right uh, stick is drifting down and into the right so if I put it manually into the center, this is how it's supposed to be. And if you see something like this on either of the sticks, make sure to increase your dead zone and just basically meet the requirements of your uh, personal sticks. All right, after that, uh, you can also set the light bar color if that's something you care about. I personally don't like it. It's just too shiny, especially if you're sitting in a dark room. So if you actually want to make it uh, not glow as much i will actually show you how to do that so go back and as you can see there's this black color in here so click on here uh, use custom color click on this and basically to make it as little 
of a light as possible so that it doesn't bother you maybe you don't like rgb just like i do just set the b to one and it's going to be having the lowest brightness of the led light on your controller be it a dual shock or dual sense and it would and it will not bother you anymore just a small tip guys and then you just go to different tabs in the settings you can set the touchpad to for example your mouse or the controls or mouse joystick whatever you want you can also use the gyroscope for the mouse as well if that's something you care about and in the other make sure to set the virtual controller settings to xbox 360 this one's this one has the biggest and the most reliable support in terms of the drivers so most of your games will be supported by this driver if you set it to dualshock you'll have problems so do not choose dualshock unless you want to have your button prompts uh, as playstation i don't really care about those to be honest and that's basically it guys thank you for watching this tutorial hopefully this helps you to have the highest responsiveness and accuracy in call of duty uh, have fun playing thank you for watching